I think that people need to just go ahead and understand that the vast majority of celebrities aren't exactly what we call bright. No, has some no, beefs against no Steinbrenner, da- I'm no sure. No doubt there is one or two percent of black people in America who have a better life. Oh, stop. That's what you think? I know that that comment there is probably going to uh, surprise a few people. It actually surprised me a little bit as well because uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, the same guy who did the song Pink Houses, you know, Ain't That America. Yeah, I can't really sing it because of copyright reasons and God knows how these copyright claims are. I don't want to get myself in trouble. But also, you know, you got Scarecrow, Jack and Diane, you know, Small town, all that stuff there. You would probably be surprised that he would say something like that. But not only am I here to refute his idiocy, but I'm also here to explain why it is that people probably should have seen this coming. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the lunacy section of this video first. Then we're going to go ahead and come on back to the why people should not be surprised by this. But before we do that, let's go ahead and roll the full comment. Yes. It is. That, that, we, well, we, I would uh, say that... Us well, white people love to have... Black people entertain us. I would say that the playing fields are a lot better than the cotton fields. That's what I would say about that. Maybe I'm crazy, John, but it seems like making no money as a slave picking cotton was it was not as good as playing left field for the Yankees. Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure there were uh, you know reasons why. Listen, I mean, listen, Dave no, Winfield no, has some no, beefs against no Steinbrenner. Da- I'm no sure. No doubt, there is one or two percent of black people in America who have a better life. Oh, stop. That's what you think? One or two percent? Okay, let's say ten percent. I'm just pulling a number out of my ass. It is. Now, I want to go ahead and say this right now. Bill Maher, the vast majority of us already know that Bill Maher is very, very much a lip. He's very, very much on the left. He claims to not be in favor of this whole woke stuff. And, of course, he's got very, very bad cases of Trump derangement syndrome. And if he ever tells conservatives to select a certain candidate for president on their side i.e. when he said that uh, we should probably select somebody other than Trump. I don't think you guys should actually listen. But then again, though, at the same time, the reason for that is because you don't want Libs picking your president. Now, I understand that this video is not about presidential candidates. This video is about John Mellencamp. I just figured I'd go ahead and throw that out there. But even Mellencamp's statement just then, about 2%, maybe 2% are living better than those who were enslaved or were actual slaves themselves, uh, doesn't exactly uh, jive very well with Bill Maher. There's a lot of things, quite frankly, to dissect from that, but let's go ahead and do that first, seeing how it's the part that I said was lunacy. And then I'll be explaining to you guys in the second half of the video, like I said before, why it is that we probably should have seen this coming and we should not have been surprised by this because, see, most people associate John Mellencamp's music with exactly what he did in the 1980s. Scarecrow. I mean, I actually grew up on John Mellencamp. My father was actually a fan of his, but for whatever reason, he started to take a leftward shift sometime in the mid-90s, but we'll get to that here in a second. So let's go ahead and post this right here first. Okay. One of the things that uh, I have uh, been in discussion with for a while is overall entitlements. And of course, if you were a slave, you were not given anything except a roof to sleep on, which by the way, was still very, very bad conditions regardless of where you were at. And of course, we did recently have this whole hoopla about the Florida school system implementing a brand new policy where people flipped out about people saying that, uh, yeah, slaves actually learned some skills. I was probably going to do a video on that at a later date. And the next thing you know, you've got Republicans, you've got conservatives fighting with one another. That's not what we're discussing. Slavery, regardless how you say it, regardless whether the skills were learned or not learned or whatever, was still some pretty bad conditions given the fact that the people, of course, were, for the most part, in bondage. I can already hear people saying, dude, I thought you were conservative. Uh, Now you're starting to sound like one of them libs. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you how history is. I've always been the type of person that believes if you're going to work somebody, you need to do it in basic work hours. You need to actually pay somebody. I'm pretty sure that everybody, right, left, center, whatever, can actually agree with that. However, the thing is this right here. This take out of Mellencamp was absolutely stupid. But let's go ahead and take care of the entitlement portion because I actually posted that first for you guys to read. Here's the thing. You guys obviously saw a very high percentage of white people up there as well. And I'm not going to deny that. There are a lot of white people out there who are also on some form of entitlements. However, that list was for the most part for welfare recipients. Here's the problem. 39% in the black community and 39% in the white community is not exactly the same. The reason why is because whites make up 61% of the nation's population. And at one point in time, it was 70%. And the next thing you know... People started identifying as a different uh, as a different race. 
For example, there were actually whites at one point in time who identified as Hispanics, and there were also Hispanics who also identified as white. However, 39% in uh, the black uh, community, for example, that's actually a much, much uh, larger number when you actually look at it because the real number is, the real fact is that blacks only make up about 12% of the nation, but yet close to 40% are on some form of welfare or WIC or food stamps. Not a good thing. Now, guys, on this particular topic, I've always believed that the best approach should be a hand up, meaning what we should do is put a work requirement back into it. So that way, if the best you think you can only get is maybe a job that only gets you maybe 24 to 32 hours a week, you can probably still collect or you can collect some form of draw on it, meaning that if the difference is kind of even out. That right there has always been my approach about it, but there are people out there who will use and absolutely abuse it. It's mostly uh, women of color, of course. It's not mostly black men. I'm going to go ahead and say it the way it is. And I'll be leaving some links in the description box for you guys. Now, is that right there to say that um, he's wrong? Well, actually, he is wrong. Because in reality, this nation has produced more black millionaires than anybody. He talked about the entertainment sector a while ago when he said entertaining for white people. Let me ask you a question. How many rappers are there out there? How many famous rappers are there? Not just the current scene. I'm just going off the old scene. P. Diddy, Snoop Doggy Dog, Dr. Dre. Of course, they think Snoop Dogg at one point in time went by Snoop Lime. Now he's back to Snoop Dogg. Nas, you know, you had all kinds of people. You know, the game, who else? <laughs> Shaggy, you know, Mr. Boom Bostic, the name, the list goes on and on and on. A lot of black millionaires. About all the great black athletes, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, of course, he is LeBron James. I don't really agree with LeBron James or anything, but I will give the man credit where credit is due. He's one hell of a basketball player. All the basketball players, all the sports stars, all the people who actually strive to uh, to make that money so that way they can take care of their families. You know, pull them out of very, very bad circumstances because a lot of these black kids come from a very, very poor areas. It's really funny that I'm talking about this because one of the videos that's coming out tomorrow is my take on what happened with the blind side, assuming it gets past copyright because there's obviously some clips in it from the movie that I had to record off of Amazon Prime rather than screen record from my phone, which a lot of people do when they make these, type of, uh, these types of videos, especially in the commentary world, they actually do video essays and whatnot, which I'm going to start doing here real soon. It's probably going to be January, but I'm going to try to try to work some in but still at the same time though fact of the matter is is that no country on earth has produced more black wealth than this nation here and also something else too about that whole entertainment sector rap music of course actors you've got denzel washington all kinds of great actresses i mean the list goes on and on and on i mean it's absolutely insane the amount of wealth that's been created for the black community in this country speaking of wealth and speaking of entertainment let me ask you guys a serious question who's the funniest comedian that you've ever listened to who is the funniest person you've to listen to i mean i it's taken me a second because there's just so many names i mean i have to go back old school kevin hart eddie murphy richard pryor you know i gotta be honest with you all my favorite comedians dave Chappelle included are black not that many white comedians not that many not not, not that many white guys that are actually funny i know some people love to look at jerry seinfeld but i never thought seinfeld was funny at all the television show was okay but for the most part it was just entertainment nothing more than that of course, white boys like uh, shows like, what was it like, uh, what's that damn show? Oh, The Big Bang Theory, that show's not funny. White people, for the most part, really and truly aren't that funny. I think that being funny and being a person of color, quite frankly, is a badge of honor. I mean, dude, I mean, you have black men and black women who go out there and work their butt off, even those ones who are some have to collect some form of government assistance. As I mentioned earlier, it should be a hand up, not a hand out. Quite frankly, you should be proud of the situation, the fact that you're actually doing a lot better than slaves were. I mean, dude, slaves, what were slaves? What, what, what was it slaves did? They got up at, what, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. They got some uh, very, very ill-fated rusty bacon, very, very bad food. They went out there, bailed the cotton, worked in the fields. They basically, if they got out of line, they got beat with a whip. I don't see black people getting beat with a whip or anything like that. Yes, they may have had living conditions, but it was outside and there was no air conditioning or whatnot like there is today. Consider yourself pleasure because back in those days there, those were, there were real men and women. They actually understood the elements. They actually dealt with the elements. Even up north in some of the conditions, which by the way, Alexis de Tocqueville talked about being worse than what the conditions were in the South for slaves. Don't worry, I'll cite it in the description box because I can already hear somebody getting triggered, screaming, racist, racist, racist. Uh, fact of the matter is, conditions back in those days were pretty damn bad. You got central heat. You got air. Some houses, of course, you've got more blankets. You've got more freedom. You've got more money coming in. A lot of people are working one jobs, and of course, some people are working two to three jobs, okay? People are actually working. They actually got money in their pocket. 
Back in those days, you didn't have money in your pocket. So I think what John Cougar Mellencamp, quite frankly, is absolutely it's really stupid. bad when you've got Bill Maher, of all people, kind of saying, yo, dude, I'm not so sure I'd go along with that. When you actually look at the poverty line, and the poverty line, of course, is very, very bad, of course, in some of these areas here. I'm not saying that that is a... Uh, that's not true. And by the way, I found out later on that Mellencamp is an activist against poverty. We'll get to that here in a second. Fact of the matter is, is that people of color nowadays are 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 100 times better than what they were offered in slavery. Don't you kind of find it funny how it is that when people from Africa come here to the United States, they look down at African Americans, especially the ones that are always getting upset and going out on TV screaming racism, the whole racist narrative like Joy Reid does every day, or Eli Mastal, or Al, or, or Al Sharpton, who for whatever reason tried to bring up Trump's past in the 1980s, never mind the fact that uh, uh, Al Sharpton's past includes a little incident uh, involving Tiana uh, Tawana Brawley, which I'll leave a link to a video in the description box, but let me go ahead and refresh you guys' memory. You heard me, you had me on tape defending this man. Recently, even after the shenanigans with him and the other that's soldiers. That's a lot of crap. No, 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 brother, that's you had your crap. chance. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, 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 That right there was the, uh, the, the fat Al Sharpton uh, getting basically pushed off the stage by, uh, by Roy Ennis. It's always a fun thing to see. You see, the whole race narrative has got to be pumped up like crazy, and obviously an idiot like John Mellencamp, who, by the way, is in fact talented, has got to come out here, run his suck. Quite frankly, he doesn't know any damn thing. If anything, I don't even think he really and truly does the activism work or anything like that. He probably just sends other people to do so. Now, with that right there being said, let's go ahead and get into the reasons why it is I'm not surprised he has such a dumb take. You see, when I first got a hold of this take, and this take has actually been out for a while, it just now resurfaced, I looked at it and I was like, you know what, let me go back and double check John Cougar's career real quick. Okay, so he gets um, he gets big for basically doing like country rock, basically in the 1970s and early 80s. Jack and Diane, I think, was the first real big hit that he had. He's got several hits, okay? You've also got R.O.C.K. in the USA, but that would come on the Scarecrow album a little bit later on in the decade. Hurt So Good, of course, that was another very good song. Authority Song was also another very good one. The man's got a lot of very good songs. He was always very talented. And my guess is that he went from being somewhat conservative to all of a sudden becoming a little bit more Hollywood in the 1990s. I want to say he did a good portion of the uh, soundtrack for the film Ten Cup, but that was when he began to shift. He used to be all about farmers. He used to be, uh, I would say he was never really and truly pro-war, but he was always somewhat pro-veteran. I mean, he did perform for the troops during the 2000s when we were overseas. As a matter of fact, I went to a Toby Keith concert when I was an Iraq during my second deployment in 2000. He wrote a lot of songs about George W. Bush. One of them, of course, was referenced as, a, as the blood from a rodeo clown, which, by the way, was about George W. Bush. He wasn't exactly a fan of his. If you're not a fan of his, I understand why. Me, personally... I still have some things about his administration that, quite frankly, I really and truly today looking at dislike. But then again, at the same time, though, I need to go ahead and be honest with you guys and go ahead and level with you. The Bush days, quite frankly, were, in fact, better, in my opinion, than the Obama days. They weren't as good as the Trump economy or anything like that, but they were definitely better than the Obama days. As a matter of fact, what you're dealing with now from Biden is just the third term of Barack Obama. There's the USO, stuff like that there. And as I said the other day in the video about Oliver Anthony, most people that do country music or most people who do music, for whatever reason, they typically tend to swing a little bit more to the left. So him being on the left does not surprise me, but he claims to be this big-time activist against poverty. I remember the 2008 presidential election. He got mad at the John McCain campaign. Not really and truly a fan of that guy. I'm just going to let you know that right now. I mean, I did vote for him in 2008, but that right there was to avoid the disaster that we would know as Barack Hussein Obama. But then again, you got to ask yourself a question. Would anything ever really change if McCain was in office? He didn't want Penn Callis' play at any of those rallies. After a while, he began to start bucking conservatives more and more and more often. So it makes you wonder exactly how long he's been going in this position. Now, by the way, I'm not saying that uh, you have to be a conservative or anything like that. You can be a classical lib and be subscribed to my channel like me. Like I said, I try to differentiate classical libs from the infected all the time. I don't know if McCain, if, uh, if uh, John Mellencamp is actually an infected now, but this take he's, he had recently does sound a little bit like maybe he's a little bit more on the infected side rather than I the infected. Side. I mean, absolutely stupid. Go back to what I said earlier, you know, Black people in entertainment. 
Richard Pryor, Andy Murphy, Kevin Hart, um, who else? I mean, all the black actors that you've had, all the black athletes, all the men who came out of poverty, who've risen out of those areas. I mean, we could talk about poverty all day if you guys want to, talk about the solutions to that. But I look at the government entitlements that have been thrown out into these minority communities, and i got to ask myself a question. Is it that people are using it as a hand up, or are they using it uh, just to get by on? Some people eventually just get addicted to it and they just keep filing for it over and over and over again. Next thing you know, they keep having more and more kids, so therefore they eventually get more money. The fact of the matter is, is that people have probably looked at this particular take that he had and probably thought to himself, my God, what an absolutely stupid, moronical take. I mean, if Bill Maher has got to be the orator of morality on this topic, then quite frankly... Yeah, even he thought it was a bad take. Oh, no, this right here was just an idiotic take. This nation has produced more black millionaires than any nation on earth. And I, I got to tell you right now, if you're a person of color, I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now. You were better off here than you are anywhere else. Just want to go ahead and say that right now. If you want to fight about it in the comment section, you want to have a discussion, go right ahead and do that right there. I'm go ahead and leave which how you feel in the comment section. It's okay with me. Don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll have a nice time talking to you there. Either way, though, guys, I'm going to go ahead and halt this video for the rest of the night. Make sure you guys go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you guys share the video. Have a good weekend, Labor Day weekend. I'm going to try to put out at least one or two videos uh, this weekend, but I also know that you guys are going to be busy as well, as well as myself. Uh, one day this weekend is going to be a bit of a grilling day, so uh, I get to have a little bit of fun with steak and chicken and all that type of stuff there. So make sure you guys leave a like button, subscribe if you guys are new here. Please hit the notifications bell. Also share the video. Leave a comment in the comment section, especially if you're pissed off and you think I'm wrong. I would love to hear what you have to say. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. And I shall see you guys later.